What's good, R&B squad? This is Heart of Ruth. I trust that this message meets you guys in good spirits. If you are new to this family, we don't believe that you're here by accident. Welcome. We're happy to have you, and Jesus is, of course, always happier. So the word I have today comes from a dream that I had. It was a very interesting and very entertaining dream. So I'll get right to it, and if this is for you, you're going to know that it is for you as you listen, okay? So in this dream... I see this man, and the man is just laying there, and he's thinking about this woman. It's like I could read his thoughts, because for those of you who have been with me for a while, you would know that when I have these dreams, it's as if the Lord allows me to feel what these people are feeling, whom I see in these dreams, or know what they're thinking. So I knew what he was thinking. I knew that he was sitting there thinking about the woman that God told him was going to be his wife, okay? And he's missing her. Like there's this longing in his heart. I mean, like a real sadness, almost like a melancholy around him because of the fact that this woman wasn't around. And I came to understand that she was the one who initiated the separation, that she was the one who decided that they weren't going to communicate. And it was because of something that he had done. It was something that he'd done that either hurt her or disappointed her in some way. Or it could have been that he originally initiated the separation and then she was like, you know what, I'm not even going to make any effort to reach out to him. And so it had him in this place of melancholy, okay? But mind you, even though he is in this place of melancholy and he is missing her, he's not doing anything to tell her that. He's not telling her he misses her. He's not reaching out, okay? Then the scene switches, and I see the woman. So now I'm seeing the female spouse, okay? And she, oh, I should mention these two people weren't married. They they weren't married, but they were each other's God-ordained or intended spouse, okay? So the scene switches and this woman, she goes into what looks like this phone company, okay? And she is complaining to a sales representative in there that she can't make a phone call. And the phone call that she wants to make is to this man, the same man who is missing her, okay? And the sales rep, he looks at her and he's like, Ma'am, you can't use the phone unless you sign the contract. And she's like, what? I don't understand. And he's like, you got to sign the contract. And she's like, what contract? And he says, the marriage contract, ma'am. You've got to sign the marriage contract. And if you don't sign the marriage contract, and he keeps saying marriage contract over and over. He says that over and over. Okay? And she's looking at him crazy, like, what are you talking about? What does a marriage contract have to do with a phone? And that was the end of the dream. (laughs) Okay? So, guys, this is the way the Lord broke it down to me. It's somebody who is in separation with their person right now. You and your person, he knows he's supposed to marry you or she knows she's supposed to marry you. You know you're supposed to marry them. But y'all are not talking right now. There's no communication, and it's because of something that this person did that disappointed you or upset you to the point where now you felt like you had to pull back. And for some of you, the word that I put out yesterday about this person having sleepless nights may be connected to this word. For some of you, this is going to be a standalone word, okay? And so you've distanced yourself from this person because it has gotten to be a little bit too much for you. And you're in this space now, you're in this headspace where you feel like they have to show you that they're serious about you. Otherwise, you're not going to take them seriously, okay? And they miss you like crazy. Let me just tell you right now. God is not a man that he should lie, okay? Nor the son of man that he should repent. And he said to tell you, whoever you are, that this person is missing you. Do not take their silence. Do not mistake their silence to mean that they don't miss you. They miss you. Okay, but here's the thing. It's some things that they're working out on their end. And what they're working out on their end is huge. It is big. Okay, because they've come to the realization that 
they can't just come at you any old way anymore. Okay? Uh, an apology isn't going to do it this time. And I'm sorry, let's start over, isn't going to do it this time. They have to show you that they're serious. And it's something that you said or did when you, in your last encounter with them, before you distance yourself from them, that let them know that, listen, we're not going to do this unless you show me that you're serious. And during that time and now, they've worked out between them and God that the only way that they can show you that they're serious is to marry you. Okay? Is to marry you. Notice that that sales rep in the dream, out of nowhere, he's telling this lady, you got to sign this marriage contract. And she's looking at him crazy like, man, I just want my phone to work. That's it. I got a phone call to make. So you may reach out to this person or they may reach out to you. And when you reach out, you may think it's just a conversation that y'all are going to have. Or you may think they're just reaching out to you to talk or to apologize. No, sir. No, ma'am. They are coming to talk about marriage and they're serious this time. Okay. And you know, what's hilarious to me about this is that they're going to have the audacity to come to you like it's like that's their term and their condition. Like, you know, we're not going to move forward unless we're married. Like there's only, we can move forward on one condition. You got to marry me, right? That's the, 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 the term and condition they're going to come at you with. But the funny thing is, you're going to be looking like at them like, bruh, sis, are you serious? This is what I've been waiting for all along. I've been waiting for you to get serious. I've been waiting for you to make this move. I've been waiting for you to man up, a woman up, and decide that marriage is where you want to take things. Because for some of y'all, and this can go for men too, for some of y'all, you've expressed to this woman, if you're a man listening to this, that you wanted to marry her for quite some time. And she's been the one that's kind of been dilly-dallying and, and making excuses, okay? And if you're a woman listening to this, you pointedly told this man or you showed him that, yo, I am not gonna, we're not gonna be just there in a relationship. We're too old for this, okay? Or even if y'all are not even that old, you're like, I'm not doing this with you. We gotta, you gotta put a ring on it. And that's what it is. And so this person is coming back to you to tell you that the only way y'all are going to move forward is if you move forward in marriage, okay? And the Lord led me to Amos 3, 3. Can two walk together unless they are in agreement? So y'all are going to have to come to an agreement about your engagement because that's going to be the topic of discussion. And the other thing is, for whom this is for, please don't be hard-headed about this. Please do not be hard-headed. Another thing that God pointed out to me is that there's someone who is thinking about throwing it all away, throwing everything that they have with this person away, the history and everything, for a replacement for somebody else, okay? But I saw this little, this little boy in the spirit and this lady trying to give him something. She was trying to give something to him. Like, I don't know, like a gift or something she was trying to give. But the little boy didn't even, he didn't even know how to receive it because he was just a boy. All right. And, and here's the thing. What that translates to is this. Don't give away what the Lord has done for you as a person. The Lord has been working on you. He's been working on you as the overall package, spiritually, emotionally, physically. Do not try to throw all of that in front of somebody who's not even ready to receive it. Do you understand? Wait for your person. Stand for your person. Stand firm for your person because marriage is coming. It's inevitable. God already spoke this word over your life. His word shall not return to him void. He already told you you were going to marry this other person who is your person. Okay, and he did not change his mind. But here you are, and this isn't for all of you. This part isn't going to apply to all of you, just some of you. Here you are thinking about giving all of the work that God did on you and in you away to somebody else because you think it's taking too long for your person to get themselves together. God said you better stand and be firm. Stand and be firm before you end up being really disappointed in yourself. Imagine... You being out on a date with Mr. Man or Miss, or Miss Thing, Miss Lady, okay? Only to find out that your person was at your door with a ring in his pocket 
or she was at your door waiting to tell you, you know what, if you want to get married, let's do this. Imagine that. That's why you need to be patient and wait for God to do what he's going to do. All right. I hope that this message blessed someone. I love you guys. I will be back with another word as soon as the Lord releases me. Take care.